Hey, how you doing? Mr. Bill here. Happy New Year. And I'm starting a new series. It's called Plugin Reviews. And this is the first thing I'm reviewing. It's called Regroove Pro. It's by Acusonus. You load drums into it, it splits the drums up with a spectral filter. Super cool. So let's load some drums into it. And then I can go over the features and then I can go over a couple of tricks and then we'll all get the fuck out of here. All right. So basically like here's uh, some drum loops that I can put in. Uh, I recorded them with my friend Hutch and we're going to release them at some point as a sample pack. Uh, they sound like this. So let's load that into Regroover. It will analyze it. Based on this analysis panel up here on the right hand corner, it'll uh, either put it into four, five or six layers. If I say six and then split it again, you'll see it splits this up into four or five or six layers. So now it's split into six. Uh, if we press play here, if I hit sync, then it won't. Um, uh, basically, if you have it on this sync mode with the host, then I think every time you play the transport in Ableton, yeah, every time you play the transport in Ableton, Accusonus Regroover will also play. Uh, but I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to hit sync, and then I'm going to just be able to play it within here. So, so far, so good. It all sounds the same. Sounds like uh, like this. Why did that play fast? So that's what it sounds like there. This is what it sounds like in Regroover. So no difference. It's the same, but if we listen to the layers... You can hear that it's not splitting it up based on like uh, regular EQing. It's it's splitting it up based on some more interesting type of filtering, maybe like FFT related stuff or whatever. I talked to the guys who made it and they told me it was based on some AI thing, which I don't really understand, but uh, yeah. So if we listen to layers, you can hear it's got some snare in there. Uh, let's see, what does this one sound like? That sounds like more of the skin layers. That sounds like more of the noise layers. Sounds like more like room mics. And I guess that's just everything else. Uh, so you can process each of these layers separately within the plugin. There's an effect thing over here. You can go EQ, comp, gate, whatever. I won't explain how to use all these because saturators, compressors, EQs, and gates, I feel like, are things that most people who are watching this video will already know. Uh, this activity thing in the analysis window up here, if it's low, I think it picks up on less transients and if it's high, it splits based on transients more, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then if you'd like, you can start to make little loops out of all of these filtered areas. So let's say I loop, you know, this section here and loop this little section here and loop this and then loop this, just loop a bunch of stuff really and then press play, it'll just loop all these areas. So you can make some interesting stuff that way, I guess. And then the, they have panning and a mixer and stuff, all the all the standard stuff that you would expect a, a layered bass thing to have. So we could turn some down and some up. And, and then if you want to go one step further and you want to make your own kits, then you can actually just uh, highlight little sections and you can drag them down here into the expansion kit. Um, I think I have to hold it there until that white line has done its business. Uh, so yeah, if we drag these down into this, this expansion kit, what we're basically making here is our own little drum kit. Uh, come on, let's just grab this bit, I guess. Cool. So if we go into the editor, you can hear this kind of got like three different drums in there now. You can envelope all these, and then you can also process these with effects like EQs and compressors as well. Um, so do whatever. Do whatever you need to do in here. Make little kits, which is kind of cool. You can actually just import your own kicks and stuff into here too. So if you wanted to have like a, you know, actual kick sample that, that you made or something, um, and then an actual snare sample or something like this, then That's impossible to play with a mouse. Um, but I guess you could use like a MIDI fighter because there's 16 pads here and 16 buttons on a MIDI fighter. Uh, cool. So that, that's basically the overview. Hopefully you caught all of that. And then um, uh, another thing you can do is you can guide the splitting process. So just as we split the analysis up here, if you use this little eraser, you can say, what don't I like just treat it as like a, an eraser just say what don't you want in this layer so let's say we didn't want like these three things in this layer and then we hit split again it'll just decide to put them in another layer at random so it's decided to put them down here it looks like 
But if we say, no, actually, I really liked layer five already. Let's get them the hell out of there. We can actually just highlight this and then we can lock some layers. So let's say we lock every single other layer except for layer six and then we hit split again. It will have no choice but to put them in layer six and therefore you can guide the filtering process a little bit as well. So that's the general overview of, of how everything works. You can, uh, you can export this as layers. So if I hit export as layers and just bounce them to my desktop, um, it'll take a sec, but basically it'll render all of these layers just into wave files and then you can re-import these into your session however you like so if i create a new audio channel here go to desktop over here and then you know you can see i just have all these layers here that i can import and actually this has been a kind of interesting way for me to make breaks recently to layer over stuff because that just sounds all trashy and cool now Uh, so which brings me to my next point though, all those trashy like high layers and stuff are actually specifically good for widening things. So if I import, um, let's, uh, let's put our analysis down to four and just put the activity in the middle, get rid of this eraser tool. So I'm just going to import a, a drum loop and we'll play this. Uh, let's unsync this. Oh, by the way, if you have sync turned on, uh, then I believe it gives you this grid option. So instead of uh, just, you know, not having sync on and just moving these loops around to whatever you see fit, it actually snaps to a grid. So at the moment it's snapping to 16ths and then you can snap it to 8ths or whatever you like. Uh, that's, the, that's only there if sync is turned on. And then I believe you can also make the selections a bit more accurate. Like, you know, this is selecting whatever two bars I think it is or whatever it is, one, one bar, I don't know. I guess that that's based on the grid. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I usually just leave it unsynced because I just like to play around with the processing. So if we listen to all these layers here, so that top one is a high frequency layer. That's a low frequency layer. That's also a high frequency layer. And that's kind of a low frequency layer. So what I'll actually do is I'll select everything from layer two lock layers three and one, split it again. So everything from layer two just goes into layer four. So layer two is pretty much nothing at this point. We could, I don't know, I don't think you can delete it, but um, we'll just, it doesn't really matter. We'll just leave it there. Um, and then unlock these layers. Well, I guess we didn't even have to unlock them. Um, but these two high frequency layers, which you can also name, uh, let's call this like high two and high one or something like that, which also doesn't really matter <coughs> uh, for this example and then i'll pan one left and one right and you'll hear these high frequency layers get super wide so for me that's been a really interesting way to widen stuff without using hast delays and stuff because what makes something sound wide is when two different conflicting or not conflicting but two different pieces of information are coming through both different speakers uh, and that's why the hus effect sounds the way it does because pretty much what you're doing is you're taking um so let's take a layer like say this saw base which is pretty mono and then we put a filter delay on this uh, and then we say on the filter delay delay the left channel and the right channel by different times then it's the same data going through both speakers but one is happening slightly later than the other so it sounds wider it sounds like that but it also the the toss-up or the compromise is that it sounds a little bit phasey so i don't like to do it that way necessarily um, and with regroove you don't have to do it that way you can load stuff in like we could load that bass sound in and see how it splits that up and then we could split it up based on this spectral filtering so let me render this out um saw bass and we'll load that into regroover and then we'll try and split the top end based on how regroover analyzes it. Um, it it works better with drums but you can actually just load anything into here and for me the coolest thing about it is this widening thing that you can do uh where did i just put that <coughs> damn it um render okay it's in dropbox apparently so let's go to dropbox here Okay, it's not there either. Where the hell is it? All right, let me just render this to my desktop. Render to desktop, saw base. All right, here we go. So yeah, um, essentially what I'm going to do here is import this saw base, see if we can split it up into some high layers and some low layers, and then just pan the high layers. Uh, and that way it'll sound hopefully a little wider. So we import this. We can see it has actually split it up into uh, four layers. 
So let's play it. Sounds exactly how we would expect. It's, it's pretty mono actually. Um, so if we put a utility on here and turn this all the way up to 400%, I believe should go silent really. It might be a tiny bit stereo actually. Yeah, it's a tiny bit stereo. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's listen to what layers we have here now. So I'm gonna unsync this actually. So we have that high layer. This is kind of like a, some weird wompy layer. That's the low layer. And that's sort of like a mid layer. So if we pan say the mid layer and the high layer to the right and the left a little bit, we get this. A much wider signal. Could even pan that. So you can kind of hear that it's like really nicely widened and sounding all cool. So that, that's what I've thought is the coolest thing about it is uh, splitting stuff up in not a way that an EQ would do it and uh, widening it in not a way that a delay would do it or a utility or, or whatever other methods you have for widening things. Uh, so yeah, this has been Akisonis Regrover. I think it's a really cool plugin. You should go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And if you enjoyed it, let me know, comment, um, tell me... Uh, if you have any plugins that you want me to review, let me know and I'll just try and get through them as quickly as possible like I did with this one, just try and go through all the features super fast um, so you can get a good idea quickly of what the plugin is and what it does and then you can go use it if you want. So uh, yeah, have a good day.